Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. In this episode, I am going to try to convince you that you still need to be using Visual C++ and you need to make it part of your automated build chain and this is a compiler that you should support. So this code that I have up right here, this binary search algorithm, is considered kind of a uh, typical proven binary search algorithm. And as you can see, we are focusing more on the warnings generated by the compiler then we are focusing on the assembly output which normally when we're using the compiler explorer we focus on the assembly output and for this particular code it's worth pointing out if you do not know already that the compiler explorer now supports microsoft's cl.exe so we have here our gcc set to w all w extra pedantic the same for clang and we have set to dash w2 and we're starting at this relatively low warning level for MSVC to make a bit of a point. MSVC actually supports four warning levels, that's one, two, three, and four, and all. And slash w all is more equivalent to clang slash w everything. It warns on all kinds of craziness, and it is probably not what you want in real code. So what we have here is this program that generates no warnings at all on these modes on these three compilers but it actually contains a critical flaw and I am going to demonstrate this by taking our cl.exe and putting it up to warning level 3 and what we see here is that we are initializing conversion from size t to int with a possible loss of data and our vector.size method returns a 64-bit unsigned int and we are putting this into a 32-bit signed int when we're building on a 64-bit platforms so let's just go ahead and make this a little bit cleaner and we'll just make this auto because we don't really care about that but then we'll see that this actually well let's enable our standard C++11 on these compilers so now we're getting some warnings from GCC and Clang saying comparison between signed and unsigned integer expressions and that's because low is now um, a signed 32-bit int and high is an unsigned 64-bit int. So let's go ahead and I guess we'll just make this size t because it's kind of complicated to say give me the correct size and initialize its value to zero. So now we are back to just cl.exe giving us warnings. And we have again that we are having a conversion from size t to integer because our midpoint in our binary search, that's actually a size t. So let's set that correctly. Or actually, in this particular case, auto would make more sense. And in fact, I believe we can make this const auto. We really want to keep it nice and correct. So that gets rid of that warning, but we still have this warning down here that says return conversion from size t to integer, possible loss of data. So let's, um, let's just make this std size t also, and we'll see what compiler warnings we get, if any, here. We're still only getting a compiler warning from cl.exe. And so what we have shown so far is that basically a standard vector contain, can contain more than two billion objects and this can actually come up on modern programs that are working with large amounts of data with modern systems that have large amounts of memory. So we were artificially limiting our binary search to approximately two billion items when a standard vector can contain many many more than that. So we've done everything that we can to get rid of these warnings, but now we're stuck here. And the return value is essentially supposed to be negative one if it can't find the element in question. And so now we have a real problem because we don't have any way of returning negative one if we want to be able to fully support the size that a vector can be. This is kind of a critical flaw here. So we reach a point where we realize that in C++ with 64-bit system, whatever, this code is almost impossible to actually implement correctly. What we'd have to do is return something like a C++ 17 standard optional or something like that, or however this would look. It's not really the point for the sake of this demonstration. So neither GCC 
nor Klang found these errors, but it is worth pointing out that Klang has its dash w everything. And if we enable that in Clang, then we start to see the same thing. Unary minus operator applied to unsigned type, results still unsigned, and we get um, weirdness that I don't really understand from W everything when I'm explicitly setting it to C++11. Why are you giving me a warning saying that this code is not compatible with C++98? But regardless, and GCC actually does have flags for this, but because GCC doesn't have dash W everything, finding the flags and enabling them is actually a little bit of a pain. So take Microsoft's compiler seriously, use it if you can, it will definitely help you find sizing and signed and unsigned bugs that the other compilers are probably not going to find. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.